As for your second question, the issue of traveling of women is or has been confusing a lot of the Muslims, especially lately, because traveling has become so easy that women are tempted. All what I need is an air ticket, uh, uh, an, an, an airplane ticket, that's it. I can travel wherever I want. I can have breakfast in uh, London and have dinner in Paris and be back before Fajr prayer in Kanu. Well, Kanu is a little difficult, maybe in Abuja, but you know what I mean. So women are tempted by this. As Muslims, we have no problem. What do you mean, Sheikh? We have no problem because we have Quran and Sunnah. So I don't have to go to Tom, Dick, or Harry to tell me, okay, it's fine for you to come to Umrah without a mahram. If you're 40 years uh, uh, old and above, it's okay for you to come for Umrah. Who says okay? So and so, Tom, Dick, or Harry, even if Charles says this, I'm not gonna buy into it because I'm a Muslim. So what I follow is the Quran, the Sunnah. So let us look at the Sunnah. In the Sahih, the Prophet والسلام, was addressing the companions. And he said, it is not permissible for a woman who believes in Allah and the day of judgment to travel without a mahram. This is indefinite. In other hadiths, he said three days journey, two days journey, one day journey, the journey of that a male goes to, and then he made that indefinite, khalas. Any type of journey, it is not permissible for a woman who believes in Allah on the day of judgment to travel without a mahram. A man from the companions stood up and said, O Prophet of Allah, my name was drawn to participate in expedition for jihad. So we have a journey and my name as a soldier, I'm supposed to go with them. But the only problem is my wife went for Hajj. So the Prophet والسلام, did not ask the man as usually one should to clarify the situation. Because if you ask a question, I would usually make a disclaimer. Uh, number one, is this so-and-so? Number two, do you have to do so-and-so? Number three. So once the disclaimer is done, then I'll give you the answer. I can't give you an answer that fits all, unless it is an answer that fits all. So the Prophet ﷺ, when he was asked about such a dilemma, he did not ask the man, is your wife beautiful or is she ugly? He did not ask the man, is she young or old? And he did not ask the man, is she traveling alone on her own? Or is she in the company of trustworthy women? Because if these factors were to affect the end answer, the Prophet would have asked him. But because the answer is fixed for all times, all generations, everyone, the Prophet ﷺ immediately said to him, go and catch up with your wife. Meaning leave jihad and accompany your wife in her hajj because she must not travel without a mahram. <coughs> now, I get people coming to me and said, Shaykh Umar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, sent the mothers of the believers, the wives of the Prophet ﷺ for hajj, and they did not have mahram. And I come and say, MashaAllah, how did you know they did not have mahram? All the mothers of the believers had brothers, had uh, nephews, had uncles, from all the Sahaba. How do you know that they did not go with a mahram? So I don't know, but uh, I thought that this was a, a legitimate reason. No, it's not. And even if he did, this was his ishtihad, may Allah be pleased with him. But we have the hadith of the Prophet, alayhi So rest assured, what you're following is the right thing. You're following the fatwa, not of Tom, Dick, or Harry, the fatwa of the Prophet himself, alayhi who said, 
it is not permissible for a woman who believes in Allah on the day of judgment to travel without a mahram and Allah Azza wa Jal knows best.